guys, this is Jacob from RoboFlow. Today I'm going to talk about the small object detection problem and how we can solve it. The outline of this video is we're going to be discussing a few main strategies. First we're going to talk about how to increase your image capture resolution. Then we're going to talk about increasing your model's input resolution. We're going to talk about tiling your images, generating more data via augmentation, auto-learning model anchors, and filtering out extraneous classes. So first of all, before we dive into some of the strategies to solve the small object problem, let's talk a little bit about it. What is it, how, when, when you might encounter it, and why it is so hard. So the small object detection problem is basically when you're trying to train an object detection model and the objects in your data set are very, very small and, and you're having a hard time getting your model to recognize those objects. This can occur in a lot of different scenarios. Um, one of the most common ones is for it to occur in aerial imagery where you're passing a drone or you're passing a plane over an area and taking pictures. And as you're taking these pictures, the objects that are down on the ground are actually very, very tiny. Um, but it can also occur in uh, all sorts of other uh, scenarios like microscopic imagery or maybe manufacturing parts or any place where you have a very small object and you're having trouble detecting this, this video is for you. Uh, so why is this problem so hard? Uh, basically, um, it's been empirically proven that the small object detection problem is very hard. Um, in the COCO dataset, for example, you can see here uh, in this chart that state-of-the-art object detectors um, basically get anywhere from about 12% uh, on small objects while they're getting oh, about 50% on large objects. This means that there's a big discrepancy between how well your model will do on small, small objects versus how well it will do on large objects. The reason for this basically is that as the model is learning, it's forming, it's forming features um, from the images that you're passing through it. Um, and these features are based on pixels and the pixels are in small objects are, there's not so many pixels there for the model to be forming features from. So it's not really um, having a great look at, at the object that it's, that it's trying to detect. And then furthermore, the loss function is based on a pixel-based calculation. So as the model is actually calculating, it's backpropagating through the model and it's not having much of a signal to look at, um, meaning that the small object detection problem is both theoretically and empirically very difficult. Um, so now let's uh, take a look at an example of a uh, small object detection problem. So here um, I have this uh, aerial maritime data set um, where uh, we captured images by flying drones over um, basically over people's boats and docks. Um, so here you can see there's a shoreline and there's uh, docks and there's boats and we've tagged all of these things so we're trying to identify uh, what is um, occurring in the uh, occurring in the um, photo from above. Um, and you can see here that the objects are quite small. Um, they don't really span too much of of the image, but um, we're going to try to detect them anyways. So how I, might we go about doing this? So the first step is um, to basically uh, play around with the resolution that you're able to uh, capture. So here you can see, um, here we can consider resizing this so we can change the X and Y dimension. Um, we can also um, get a feel for how much resolution we got from our data set by looking um, at the data set health check and seeing what the uh, resolution of images are. So here you can see actually that we have pretty large images to work with. That's 4,000 by 3,000. So we should really try to use all those resolutions. Um, the other thing is as you're um, changing the resolution via resize, um, you're going to want to be also making sure that you pass that along to when you're training your model to actually train the input resolution of the model as well as the input resolution of the image because the model will be uh, pre-configured based on the resolution that you passed, passed through to it. Um, now, the one thing about knowing about increasing resolution is that uh, you can basically up the resolution to up the performance, but it will also up the inference time because you're running through a larger model. Um, and so there, maybe you're going to want to be uh, trying to find solutions to work, work, work around that. So um, one solution is to actually tile your images. So you can take the image and you can actually chop it up into sections. Um, and then this will make it smaller, so when you pass it through, you can do inference a little bit quicker. It also lets your uh, model zoom in on the small object, so you're actually kind of zooming in by tiling, uh, tiling the image. So we can check out that pre-processing step. So um, here we have an image. Um, here's the image, and you can see here 
is it being tiled? So let's see, 10 by 10, say. Looks like something like this. So that, that looks pretty good. Maybe that's more zoomed in than you actually want to go. Um, this isn't a great example image, but uh, you get the idea. You're chopping up your, uh, your image and you're getting closer to the objects. Um, then another thing that you might want to do is after you've uh, done that, you, you have uh, basically, um, I'll actually go ahead and apply that. Um, and I'll also go ahead and apply resize. Um, okay, so um, after you've chopped it up, you may have left a lot of your images with uh, basically like a null area where there aren't any objects. So you might want to take those out because if you're passing in a bunch of blank images to your model, it might not be able to get past that initial hump where it's more safe to just predict nothing um, than to actually start predicting things. So you might have to filter out the null images a little bit. So that's also possible here. Um, you can go ahead and set uh, the images to be uh, whatever percent of null you want in the final data set. Um, so that's another technique. Uh, we've gone through a few resizing, tiling, and filtering null. Um, so that's all on the data set side. And obviously you can always get uh, generate or you can gather more data. Um, and gathering more data is gonna make your model perform better pretty much in any scenario as long as it's high quality data. Um, but another thing you can do is you can experiments, experience experiment with augmentation. So augmentation uh, lets you basically generate more data from your training set um, than uh, you otherwise would have. So for aerial imagery, you might want to rotate it, flip it, crop it, do all kinds of things to actually generate more scenarios that your model can learn from. And this will help you kind of overcome the small object detection problem just by raw force. Um, now moving on to other strategies. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, you can use uh, models to um, basically uh, auto-learn anchors. Uh, the anchors are the bounding boxes that are kind of the prototypical um, anchor box that your model is going to then predict its final bounding box based on. And you can auto-learn these based on the size distribution of your data set. So this really kind of helps it custom tune back to uh, exactly the size of the objects that are in your data set um, and the size and the shape, and particularly the shape. Um, and uh, this is all auto-learned in YOLO v5. We have uh, a lot of content out there on Roboflow about YOLO v5 and how to train it. Um, but the auto-learning of model angers is a very convenient thing that comes automatically pre-installed with this. Um, then uh, the other thing is uh, you may want to actually, uh, again, back on the data side, um, filter out extraneous classes. So for example, in, well, in this data set, we have some classes that uh, may be problematic for detecting small objects. Um, basically, um, in this data set, we have uh, docs and lifts, um, and the docs are actually overlapping the lifts. Um, and so maybe we want to decide which one that we uh, want to uh, detect and, and leave the other one to pass away. Um, so we can do that by doing modify classes. We can rename our classes here, or we can um, omit them. So we could actually just say, you know what, uh, the lift is not important. I want to know if there's a doc. Um, and then you can filter that out and, and that will uh, help your model not be confusing small objects on top of uh, other objects because oftentimes your small objects will be um, within other larger objects that are annotated and you want to make sure to clean that up um, if your model is experiencing problems detecting both because that will uh, that will help uh, your model perform much better. Um, so that's it. Um, there, those are a few main steps that we can take to um, basically address the small object problem. Uh, you um, really should think about resolution. The highest resolution that you can get is going to be the best for performance. Um, but also, as you're increasing resolution, you may want to try to tile to be able to keep your um, inference uh, time down. Uh, and then the other thing you can do is generate more data with augmentation. Um, you can auto-learn anchors. And then you can also filter out uh, extraneous classes to make sure uh, that your model has the best shot at learning uh, the small objects that you, that you wanted to detect. Um, so thanks for listening today. Um, feel free to subscribe below and uh, stay tuned for more updates from RoboFlow about how to uh, create the best uh, custom computer vision models um, out there. So thanks so much.